What is good guys and welcome to today's very special video. If you can see behind me, we're at a very special event today called Nostalgic Two Days. And the event name literally is exactly what the event is. It's two days of this incredible nostalgic feeling where you get to see all these old and cool cars. Well, cars that are old now that we don't feel like are actually old. Like for instance, 32 GTRs everywhere that you guys in the States are only just getting your hands on now. But obviously lots of really cool old Zeds and things like that just everywhere through this entire event. Some very cool builds, some very cool old like throttle body carburetor kind of stuff going on. Anyways, enough chit chat. Let's go look at some really cool cars. So I figured we'll start over on this side of the event first and we'll work our way through all the way up to that end. It's one huge massive hall and uh, on this side's kind of all the cars and everything on display. And then on that side is like kind of like a flea market where you can buy lots of cool old parts, secondhand used things, as well as all the original old pamphlets and booklets that were, you know, at dealers when they were selling those cars. So, oh, that R30, mm, FCs. You guys know how much I'm dying for an FC. And this is like a brand new factory condition FC right here. And I don't know too much about all the different models, but seeing two convertible ones side by side, one NA and one turbo is just mind blowing. Absolutely mind blowing. The, I have to get a red FC. That has to be the FC I get. I'm not getting a convertible one for sure, obviously. So yeah, this one's left-hand drive. So this is an American one. And then these two are right-hand drive. Interesting. There you go. Also, I've said this a few times in my previous videos, but if you're watching for the first time, left-hand drive cars in Japan um, of like the Japanese kind of delivered cars, like, you know, the FC or the 180SX, like 240s in Japan, sell for twice as much as like a standard 180 would. So it's insane. Left-hand drive cars, American versions of Japanese cars in Japan are worth a lot more money. Oh, look at this NSX. Guys. We're gonna see so many cars here today that are literally like mind-blowing. There's a lot of really cool old companies here that have been building and making race cars for centuries on these old model kind of, uh, I guess, classic cars. Let's just say classic, classic. And I did see something up here that I thought deserved a bit of attention. We'll get to all the cars that we're walking past, trust me, we will. Ooh, SA22C. This is what I wanted to show you. It's a Holden RB30 in Japan. There you go. So if any of you guys don't know, these were sold in Australia in a Holden Commodore. It's an RB33 litre RB block. Now, Aussies throw the top head section because it's single cam in the bin right away. RB26 or 25 head goes straight onto that. Um, if you got NVCS with your 25 head, you gotta do some cool stuff for oil feeds for that. But otherwise, 3 liter RB, capable of stroking up to 3.4 liters. Absolute powerhouse, nicknamed the JZ of the Nissan world. But obviously, it's, let's be honest, guys. RBs aren't as strong as JZs in their factory form. You definitely have to brace them and build them and spend a bit more money on them than what you have to do with the JZ. But, Nissan did all the R&D and development on their own engines. They didn't hire or pay for another company to make their own stuff. So that's where I think Nissan kind of beats out Toyota. But I do admit, so the Yamaha Toyota JZ engine, uh, that's a bit of controversy, I know. But it is definitely a good, strong, reliable engine. There's a reason why in FD, the basic, like all FD and D1, it's like, hey, we need to build a car. The first option is S15 2JZ. It's just a thing. This is so cool. I have not seen a Honda City Turbo in this good condition ever. And they've even got the Moto Compo with it. So if you don't know, the Moto Compo used to come in the boot with this car as a pair when you would buy it. And it's insane because this thing is turbo and it's all crammed into there. It's a little K car format, very, very small and just really cool cars. You can see Recaro seats and things like that in there. We'll get a better look in there. And the, the Moto Compo would literally just fit in the back of this and it was like, sold it as a pair. It was really cool. Anyways, as you guys know, obviously, these days you can just buy the Moto Compos themselves, buy, and they're all over the place on the internet for sale. They've gone up a lot in price. They used to be only like a couple hundred bucks, like five, ten years ago. Now you can't get one for less than a grand. Anyways, very, very cool, unique car. Look how cool that looks. Nice old school Recaros. And the Moto Combo is also one of my favorite things. But something that I really wanted to look at with you guys is actually the engine bay in the Honda City. It's very interesting how 
because of space and stuff they couldn't do much with the accessory side of things of the engine and as you can see like there's literally no room there for like power steering pumps or aircon compressors or anything like that down there so what they did was they developed a system where the pump actually comes off the cam gear here it's like driven right there it's insane um, and I'm pretty sure that's probably aircon that could be aircon there or power steering but it's just interesting how because of space and this is what the Japanese are really really good at is improvising and using what they have available and that's exactly what they did with this and they saw that as well with the J JDM Japanese version of the Mini Cooper every other version they didn't put air conditioning in there because the the you know they said it wouldn't fit and then along come the Japanese and go it'll fit and they made it work so yeah very interesting to kind of see how they smash everything in here the little intercooler with the little scoop there to get some air through very very cool and I love this system it kind of reminds me of like mechanical fuel pumps and things like that that you see now on like RBs and JZs that people are running in high horsepower applications anyways still very very cool this has to be the coolest Hokolska I have ever seen everything about it is just incredible the carbon fiber hood everything all the trimming the lips everything all carbon fiber little nickel cat things in the lights over fenders wheels AP racing brakes oh my gosh absolutely beautiful Brembo's in the rear carbon fiber trunk wing there I mean I guess it's probably easier and more affordable to to get carbon fiber versions of all these uh, uh, these parts because these days it's very difficult right to uh, source original good condition parts because no one makes them anymore right the whole thing is caged out interior wise nice Recaro's harnesses a bunch of carbon fiber going on in the dash there just like you saw very very cool look at all that man so cool the rear is pretty custom seems like they've welded in a custom plate here and everything completely deleted the rear seats obviously weight reduction this thing is like a built race car shame though it won't won't let me touch it <laughs> it'd be cool if we can find the guy that owns it and then maybe be able to uh check it out and over here once again very nice condition ken mary this guy is running what looks like skyline front brakes like the the four pots in the front and in the rear too very nice the paint on this is just as immaculate as it is on that one this one the transmission is a bit interesting it's definitely got uh, some other training in there because it's very short in there the little shift knob very low down there but everything about this is very clean and amazing condition moving on to an s30 here or 240s uh, zx sorry 240z what is wrong with me so nice and clean these guys are kind of having a conversation and talking right now so we'll let them be but man so many nice cars and i'm loving that they're using a lot more carbon fiber now for like over fenders and stuff like that very cool we got a sora a celsior celsior however you pronounce that very nice this is booth is the world world classics booth very cool there's a website there if you guys want to check that out anyways we've got so much to look at let's keep going another s30 i like this how they took the hood off so you can see everything in here man look at those carbs individual so normally what you see is um uh like carburetors that look after two inlets right but this one's individual carburetors for each in inlet very very cool so we'll see ah, yeah this is what i'm talking about see how it's like kind of one section for two one carby for each and this one's individual that's very cool <laughs> love that i really want to play around with this kind of stuff later on i think it'll be cool to do like some unique build something like this right we saw this last time we were here s14 it's an l28 swapped into there how sick is that right it just works it goes so well and the guy's a drifter he drifts this like a nico circuit and stuff very cool oh look at this the air ducting pipes here uh plates here he's actually like got it cut so that that sits in there perfectly just all the attention to detail and all these kinds of builds very very cool i love that that is so cool kind of reminds me of liberty walk 34 with the l28 in that as well 
And as you can see, there's a lot of things for sale here, gloves, racing gloves. These kinds of events are really good to get your hands on some parts that you've been wanting to get because everything's discounted because it's, you know, sold at the event. So, you know, like Terry Mays over here, Oh, Skykins are here, and everything's marked down by like 20%. It's insane that I'm at a nostalgic two days event and there's a 34 GTR here, but obviously it's not really nostalgic kind of car, but they're mainly advertising this car uh, port thing that lifts up and closes and protects your car and all that kind of stuff. It even has like built-in vents and I got a bunch of pictures here showing examples of it. This is actually very popular in Japan. There's a guy that owns <laughs> the Photoshop on that. Hey, they're showing an example of it. Look how easy it is. Very cool. But yeah, there's a guy that lives near my house. He's a neighbor and he has one of these and he uses it to protect his S30, which is like the cleanest 240Z you've ever seen. It's probably actually here today. He brings it all the time for this event. Very nice, man. Ugh. So many cool cars here that are just so much money in them. Well, they never used to have so much money in them, but obviously the price of everything just skyrocketed. This thing's sick. All the old air horns in there. So much chrome going on. Very cool. Oh. And this is what I mean, like you can get all of these old parts. Look at all these old wheel caps here. And then like all the parts, like tail lights, side mirrors, all that kind of stuff. Old seals, like brand new old stock seals for doors and stuff. More tail lights. All this kind of stuff. Look, ignition barrels and things. You know, all the stuff you need when you're restoring these kinds of classic cars. Look at all these old Nardi wheels here too. So cool. Whoa, tarantula? That's sick. I haven't seen one of those in years. That's 90 bucks for that Nardi wheel. Like just, it's a good place to come. Get yourself a nice, uh, a nice deal. Oh, that's cute. Little keychain, little, uh, um, what are they called? Like subway handles. Yeah, you can get a lot of really cool stuff here. Obviously, you know, obviously prices range as well, like full on header kits and stuff like that and intake manifolds. A lot of suspension components, like all of this stuff, all custom for these older style cars. So, you know, obviously there's a lot of aftermarket support starting to come out for these with sway bars and things like that. Because the old parts, you just can't get new anymore. You can't get replacements and it's so hard to find secondhand ones. So it's good to see a lot more companies getting on board with newer technology, with, you know, uh, spherical bearings and stuff like that. Much like, I guess, like, you know, the Mopar kind of uh, classic cars in the States. Like, every, a lot of companies are now making a lot of aftermarket support for that. This thing's cool. Oh, I love the boxing there that they did on the, on the carbies. This is a genius idea. Perspex hood so everyone can look in there but not touch. I love that. He probably actually just runs that because it's cool as hell. I totally run that. <laughs> the join they had to do. I guess they couldn't get a sheet big enough for the whole thing. As long as it holds together, right? Very cool. Uh, it's a three, is it a three road? Two rotor, two rotor, right? I'm still learning my rotaries, but yeah, yeah, it's a two rotor because they're the, where the rotor housings are there. Yeah, two rotor, very cool. Probably could have told like from the carburetor and the two inlets there. I'm still learning my, uh, oh yeah, two exhaust outlets too. Definitely two rotor, very cool. These things sound incredible. I imagine this Perspex would actually be hard to keep clean with all the, uh, you know, with the engine running in there and like any fumes coming out of the crankcase or whatever, or the carbies. Looks good though, very nice. And then of course, SA22C, very nice car. This is May's favorite car. She's like, I don't want an RX8 anymore, I want this. So, I'm okay. Yo, look at the wheels, they're like rotary shaped. I just noticed that, that's cool. Oh man, there's so many cool cars here. So much stuff that I just have no idea about as well because I was not like around and in the car scene when these were out. Is that Robbie Nishida? It is. Let's go say hi. I was right, it was Robbie. What's up? Uh, hey, what are you, are you doing, doing in Japan right now? Oh, I live here. Wait, what? I, I didn't actually know that, I'm terrible, sorry. Oh no, I live here. Yep. Um, I travel to the States every month okay. um, when there's events. Go wherever I have to. Oh. I base in Japan, so usually, usually, usually in the winter I'm here. Dude, so. we gotta do a Nico day someday. Just we driving. will, because Nico's only what hour and a little bit away. But, from my yeah, house. if that. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, for sure. Let's do some driving. Oh yeah. Hell yeah, man. Let's go. I'm gonna go chase him down, and he's gonna beat me. <laughs> Get he's out of here. Better looking than me. <laughs> Get out of here.
<laughs> Catch you, man. Dude, so awesome connecting with people at this event. I was not expecting to rub into, run into Robbie today. Um, let's get back into looking at some cars. So good. So these guys were here last year. They only had like a couple cars out. Um, but this year, they've definitely brought a few more. And these guys do full restorations of Leopards only. Um, and it's just cool. I love the old VG30 kind of vibes. And this was, I think, the first. Was this the first car? I guess the Z kind of, the 300ZX came with the, the VG30 maybe first, like the Z31. But I think this was around the same period. So, yeah, very, very cool. Single turbo on these, actually, which is very cool. Um, because normally they just do the twin turbo, right? But like the header kind of wraps around and meets down there. Um, I think they have a good example of that here on this engine here, as you can see there, but that's more of an NA one, I'm pretty sure, but they did the same kind of design for where the turbo would bolt up. Very, very cool. I love it. It's good to see some uh, VG30 love. VG30s sound really good, I like them. Another super clean, this is a GTX FC. Uh, love it. Let's keep going, let's keep going. So many cool cars out here. I don't even know what to film. Corona, this thing's sick. Yo, original fair lady. Sick, it kind of does look like a 350Z. Just, just bear with me for a second, guys. Kind of looks like a 350Z, not gonna lie. <laughs> That's cool. Yo, this is sick. The whole army green, I love that. Very nice. Oh man, there's so much to look at here, guys. This is gonna be a very long video. So buckle up and don't go anywhere. Smash that like button because yeah, I know you're gonna watch this. If you love JDM classics as much as I do, this place is literally like a candy store for grown ass men. Or even if you're not a grown ass man, if you're still, uh, still waiting for those balls to drop, I'm sure you're still gonna enjoy this. <laughs> this is insane. The price of this is nearly 50 grand. Uh, why are they getting so expensive? I just want one. <laughs> uh, 40 grand for this one. Guys. Yo, 23 grand for this. That's a bit cheaper. That's a bit more affordable for a 3 liter MA70 Supra. Oh, they got another one here. Yeah. So that's the 3 liter one, and this is the 2.5. What's this one? No, not for sale. Damn it. <laughs> Oi. R32 GTR. Dude, this thing is clean. Very nice. So good to see. And then over here. Man, these headers are nuts. Very, very, very clean and cool. So cool. Love this. Single cams, man, they don't get enough love. Especially the RB30 single cam head. We've had a few customers at Ataka Garage build them and they just sound lumpy and cool as, so. Definitely, obviously, I do prefer dual cam heads on my RBs, but one day I have to do something with this single cam RB30 because they're just baller cool. And look at this Hakolska, man. Front endless brake kit on that. And the suspension with uh, external reservoir and everything. So cool. I'm loving seeing all the new aftermarket parts coming available for these cars. Just look at that inner well there too. So clean, fully restored. I'd love to see what the engine bay looks like on this. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'll say that again. Absolutely beautiful. This is what I was talking about, guys. You can get the original, like, dealer pamphlets and stuff for the Sylvia S14, Nissan March, the Laurel C34, Cedric. Like, all of these are available for sale. Prices vary as well. You can get some, you know, kind of scrappy looking ones or brand new condition ones. And it just all varies. And you can get them all here at this event. Just some really cool memorabilia to get your hands on. This thing is so cool. What is this? Is this a Cherry? Fully restored X1 Cherry. This is a car that one day my goal is to buy one, full Yashio factory pink spec SR20 swap and give it to Okachan because the very first car he ever raced with was a Cherry. I think that'd be a very cool gift to give him as like a thank you for everything he's done for me in the future. That's my goal. So we'll do that one day. I probably shouldn't be telling you guys like my plans because that'd be probably like an epic viral video to make or something, but I think it'd be cool if you guys were all a part of that too. We'll get there. We'll get there one day. I don't know where we're going to find one of those cars for sale and at a decent price and restore it, but we'll make it happen. Oh man, everywhere you look right now, it's just 
No! No! No, guys, I'm supposed to be looking at these, not this. No, I've been baited by an EG. <laughs> oh, you guys know how much I want an EG so bad. And this thing is cool as, super clean. Is that a B18? Hey, get the slab squat on. <laughs> no Western spies there. I saw your heels flat on the ground. Dude, headers and everything. I just want to hit VTech with this. Um, Okachan's wife loves Civics because her dad used to have one and she loved the sound of the VTech with straight pipe. It's kind of funny. She's probably like a Kanjo Zoku kind of runner. Very nice Brid seats. It's so good to see Brids in a, in a Honda Civic. Normally everyone goes for like the Type R Recaros, right? EGs are so cool, man. Ah, oh, Cusco booth. Yo, Tomei Powered is here. This thing is so cool. The A Series engine. They're so tiny, you can almost pick them up. Very cool. Oh, look, they got this there as well. That stops the cap from coming off from the vibration. So much going on here mechanical fuel pump and all that kind of stuff. Very, very, very cool. Love these old builds. We were actually at Tomei in their engine room and they were rebuilding one of these engines. I wonder if we can uh, go have a look inside there. Let's go, let's go have a chat to the staff at Tomei. The guys at Tomei, they said, I'm all G to jump in this thing. I don't know if I'm gonna fit. Let's see. This is so cool. It's so small in here. How am I gonna fit? All right, here we go, here we go. You know what? I don't, I fit pretty good in here, honestly. How do you fit? This is, I don't know, I don't know how I fit in this man, but I do. This is cool. They said the only thing I can't touch is the accelerator because carbs and things like that, right? Oh, yes, 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 yeah. But, dude, this is honestly not a bad seating position and it's on rails, so if I wanted to, I could move the seat further back. That's sick. Yo, I could race this. I literally could. I mean, it'd be in. Yo, I could. I could actually race this. I fit in here so well. I'm actually surprised. This thing would drive like a go-kart for sure. Lap timer. Um something by Saad. Was it original multi temp, temp meter? Oh, it's a temperature meter. RPM. And look, it goes up to 12, but it's set at 10. So that would be probably where the limiter is. 9,000 has got a little mark there. This thing would rev so crazy as an A-series. Little battery switch. Full cage. Obviously stripped out in the rear, racing purposes. And we've seen this racing at Fuji Speedway before. Very, very cool. Let's jump out of this. But the seat actually fits really, really well. I'm surprised. I fitted in that. That was like, this almost felt like a Brid Zeta. Like all the little things there, the original. That's so cool. Man. Uh, love the guys at Tomei. Make sure you guys give them some love. Such a cool car. Side exit exhaust, and this thing just sounds nuts. I don't know what size wheels these are. They look like 12s. Let's try and read the side of the tire. Where's the sizing? Uh, 230 by 500 R13, so 13 inch wheels. So cool. Everything about this car is just amazing. Nice fuel cell there. The guys really are a champion. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you so much. So cool. So this booth we've seen at a couple other events and this is where they actually make like GTR and old like Z series seats, physical real seats, like lounge room seats. So this is from the Ken Mary, this one. You got a couple other ones here. And you can see that like even the wooden stuff, right? They make the Z for the Z, right? Cause this is from, I think a 240Z. Very, very cool. And as you can see, this is the frame that they make here. They're not like the cheapest seats in the world. This is like 1.2K USD, but you're getting a genuine Z seat restored on a custom made frame. And it's just really, really cool. I think it is anyways. I think it's also a bit of a flex. Like it's, it's interesting, this particular seat is from a Hokolska and it's actually cheaper, 20% off from the Fair Lady Z one. <laughs> so, so cool. Like seriously, very, very cool seats. I love it. Up at this end, another 32 GTR next to 11. This thing looks so clean. I don't think I've ever seen 11 this shiny and epic. Carbon fiber hood. A lot of carbon fiber parts for these now. There's a very similar trend as, as I was talking about where a lot of people are buying carbon fiber parts now because it's actually cheaper and easier to replace and get replacement parts in that aspect. And obviously people don't want to use FRP because you know, FRP is kind of cheap and tacky, but carbon fiber just makes the car look good. It's strong. A lot of people now, you can actually buy carbon fiber rear quarter replacements uh, because obviously with the 11s and the Hachidokus, the 8.6s, they rusted out a lot. 
and it's you can't get replacement panels cheaply or easily right no one makes them anymore so everyone just goes for the carbon fiber route very very nice so good to see more and more companies making aftermarket parts for these cars now man we haven't even gone through like a quarter of this place there's so much like there's OS Geik in there and ah oh, so cool this is cool so whole bunch of rotary stuff here and as you can see there's Cosmo Sports behind them a bunch of like housings and rotors and stuff and then over here seems like rotary specialty garage Starfield oh okay they got some cool videos of them racing very nice and then some cool parts and things like that on display here looks like they make some ECU stuff too very cool yeah they got like a booklet here on it very cool oh man listen to that thing oh sounds so good <laughs> All right, yeah, we definitely need to get amongst the rotary guys at some point in the future, guys. It has to happen. I know, like, I say it a lot about, like, all these different cars that I want to get a hold of. What on earth is that? <laughs> Anyways, I know I say it a lot, but it's literally my plan is to just get amongst a bunch of really cool, unique cars. You know, like, it's just like Adam, right? Adam has a pretty big car collection now, right? And there's just all these different cars that he wants to play with and muck around with. And obviously he's got his favorite, like, let's be honest. He's got a couple favorites that he prefers out of the pack. But you know, every car has a different use, different feeling, different driving experience. And I think we're very similar in that aspect. And that's definitely like, like check this out. The Sylvia with a CA18 still in it. You don't see that anymore. Everyone always SR swaps things. And this guy's gone and built the most insane CA I've ever seen in an S chassis. And we've seen this before. This thing is just baller and totally cool. I love that he's running hard lines for his boost control. Very smart move. But yeah, CAs. Guys, I love CAs. Absolutely amazing motors. They still should be like worked on and tuned on. But people just always go to the SR route. This literally sounds like a baby, S, uh, baby CA. They're the coolest thing as ever. There's a full feature made on him. Very, very cool. And then, yeah, more and more parts for sale. Weird, unique cars. 2000 GT. Man, this thing is worth so much money these days. So clean. This thing, I, I don't know what to call this. This thing just looks so special with the one headlight. It looks like a Minion almost. I'm gonna call that a Minion car, <laughs> that'll work. Oh man, old school Lotus. And then here comes like the flea market section. Let's go see what we can find. Yo, what is that? This is seriously the coolest thing ever. At first, from a distance, I was like, what exactly is it? Because I was thrown off by the lights. But it's a Ferrari 308, I believe. So cool. The livery's baller as. Love it so much. So weird. It's like rally kind of lights going on in the front. Oh, man, this thing is sick. I got this one here on display. Engines popped. Hang on, let's see. Tall person pros right here. Bam. Look at that bird's eye view there for you lads. Don't have to cut in front of people or anything. So cool. All right, let's see what we can find in the flea market. Ooh, ah, ha, ha, ha. Skyline lineup. Okay, we'll get to the flea market in a little bit. This is so cool. Wait, is this R31 house? Oh, of course it is, it is. <laughs> We're at R31 house. I was like, hang on a minute. It's a 34 with what looks like to be be, hang on, I'm confused. It's a 25 DE Neo? No, it is a it is a debt. All right, I'm confused. I always get confused looking at R31 house because they're famous for RB20 stuff, but they have their very famous um, exhaust manifold that makes a very unique sound, single turbo down there, nice intake plenum. They make all this stuff as well, as well as special kits to bolt on uh, 26 throttle bodies and things like that. It's very unique, they have like uh, a custom forward facing intake manifold, but they're still using the original fuel rail. Very cool. So nice. It's got to be a 25 though, for sure. No point looking at the chassis. <laughs> the little mini battery conversion. So cool. I love that. We got 33 GTR here. 32. 26 with a single turbo conversion, hey? I like that. That is, what is turbo is that down there? I can't tell. Huh. Very nice. It's interesting to see a, a low mount single turbo RB26. You don't see that often, but I bet you that sounds good with that exhaust manifold. Then over here, hey, here we go. R31, this is what I'm talking about. They're famous for the 20s. RB20. 
infamous R31 house exhaust manifold there that has that crazy unique sound that just sounds, it'll melt your ears, the sound that this 20 will make on song. So nice, love it. If you don't know as well, these valve covers are super rare, very expensive and hard to find because they got the ribs on them. Very cool. And we obviously got a nice R30 here with an FJ20 motor in there. Very nice. All right, let's go, uh, let's go take a look at the flea market. So check out this Z, guys. L28 series running a Helltech Elite down there. Full EFI conversion running RV coil packs. Injectors and everything. Oh, this is so cool. ITVs, the whole lot. And just look at all the custom water piping that they've done with a pump and everything. It's so nicely built. And I love that they just added the Helltech Elite down there. It's just like the best final touch ever. Everything about this build is just beautiful. Everything's been shaved in the engine bay. Man, this is the cleanest EFI conversion I've ever seen on a Z and an L-Series motor. The headers, everything, it just gives them so much more room. The throttle body there. So cool, the throttle linkages and stuff for the throttle bodies, the ITBs. This is so beautiful. So cool, and that looks like the map sensor there that they've got a nice adapter for. Very, very cool. Oh, I love seeing Helltech and new technology on these things. I was just having another look over this with Okachan, and I did miss this before. They have an adapter so that an RB cam angle sensor bolts onto that. That is so cool. Everything about this car I love, everything. Yo, Chris Rudnick, where you at? All your merch packs are right here. What is going on? This is so cool. Oh, man. There's so many cool cars here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. They've got a whole row over here. Yo! GTRs. GC8s. Wait, what? That's cool. What else is here? What else is here? There's a lot of people. Probably all the good ones are already gone. Look, look, look at this 34, guys. Geez, 34 GTR, literally, Rudnick, where you at? Like, this is like all the stuff you want for your merch packs. <laughs> Here we go, guys. All the old, like, instruction manuals and books. And oh, yeah, this is where you gotta go through. You gotta find the one for Nissan. Look at that S14 Zenki spec sheet. Let's go through and see what we can find here. We want to try and find, look at this, other people just jump in here and trying to look for stuff too. Whoa, 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 what was that? Was that an R30? No. All right, let's keep going. Ooh, GTR book for the 35. Don't care about that. Fair Lady Z, Pulsar, El Grant. It'd be cool if we found like an old cherry one, but that would be expensive. I'm gonna go through all of these and see what we can find. Sunny Van, Caravan. Oh man, there's so many cool ones in here. Hopefully we get the ones that I want. Really, I'll just buy anything that's old and cool if I was to be honest. Yo, B210. All right, let's see what we can find. Sadly, I didn't find anything I wanted in those pamphlet files. Sadly, I didn't find any pamphlets that I wanted. May have been a bit too late because it's already like, you know, 5 p.m. So probably all the good ones are already gone, but we'll see if there's any other stores that have anything. See what else we can find. It's good to see companies remaking these wheels again. Epic. Yo, that seat. Currently 220 bucks. Nice. Like I said, aftermarket, why are there massages here? I don't understand how that's uh, a product that you want to sell at a car event. Although, I mean, it, nothing surprises me in Japan anymore. Alrighty, I think, like, I feel like the kind of flea market section is kind of lacking this year. Definitely a lot smaller than it was last year. Nonetheless, still very, very cool. Let's see what else we can find. Another beautiful FC. Oh man, it's even got like the lace covers on there. Whoa. So nice. Oh, this is for sale. 31 grand USD. Far out. It, worth it by the looks of it. This thing looks clean as, but it's on a Series 5. Needs to have the round lights for me. Luckily, those are actually generally a bit cheaper. Old School Gloria. That is cool. Sora. These things are epic. Yo, hang on a minute. No way! They have started making new panels. Let's go have a look at that booth. For all of you guys that love your JZX chases, this is where they came from. How cool is this? And look, straight six boys. Very cool to see an original old chaser. Do you guys notice it looks quite similar to almost a Mustang? Obviously the paint with the stripes not helping as well. But yeah, kind of similar to a Mustang, hey. Toyota chaser. Very, very cool. But I wanted to look at this booth over here. These guys are remaking 
all the the parts for the Hachiroku. Look at this, they've even got one on display where they show like all the replacement panels and stuff. That is so good. There you go, restoreparts.com, restore-parts.com. These guys are remaking all the Hachiroku parts. That's so good to see. Oh wow, they showed the whole process of how they molded them and made them and stuff. Wow, and like the, the templates for pressing in the steel. That is so cool. Look at this, new doors, all new rear quarter panels, boot panels. This is such a good example to show like this old beat up car and they can replace and fix all of it. Look at that, that's so good. So if you guys have a 86 Hachiroku in the States or Australia and you need parts, get in contact with these guys and find a way to get them shipped to you because yeah, rear panels, quarter, quarter panels, rear panels, more quarter panels, front bumpers, bonnets. Dude, they make so much restoration parts. So it looks like they're doing it for multiple other models too because that's definitely not an 8.6 quarter panel. Very, very cool. There you guys go. I wonder what they charge for stuff like that. I mean, it doesn't matter. You're getting a brand new metal panel. That's awesome. And it looks like it lines up really well. I just noticed this thing as we're getting ready to walk out. My gosh. What... What is that? <laughs> I have no idea. So many parts on this side. Yo, the belt is like little pieces joined together. That's so trippy. There you go, Rolls Royce. 40 to 50 horsepower Silver Ghost. That's a big engine for 40 horsepower. <laughs> so cool. This thing is so cool. It's a Hokoska and he kept the rusty panels on it but restored everything internally. Engine bay, interior, but just left the body like that. I love that look, super cool. I've walked around this place for a couple hours now. I'm sure I missed a bunch of cars. I'm sorry, but I hope you enjoyed this little snippet into Nostalgic's two days, which is literally one of the best events here in Japan for the classic kind of JDM like scene, subculture, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, guys, like I said, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you smash that like button. Tell me in the comment section, what was your favorite video? And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out, coronavirus mask. Jamata.